Welcome to this deep dive here on Tech Talk Central. We've got uh, source material sent in by you, our listener. That's right. It's all about portable monitors today. Specifically, we're digging into the Amazon product pages and importantly, the user reviews for two models, the Lenovo ThinkVision M14T Gen 2. And the ViewSonic VX1655 4K. Exactly. So our mission really is to sift through all this info from the sources. Yeah, cut through the noise. And pull out the key facts, the stuff that actually matters, so you can get up to speed quickly on these two monitors without drowning in specs. We're basically translating the source material into what you really need to know. Let's get into it. Okay, let's start with the Lenovo ThinkVision M14T Gen 2. What are the sources telling us? All right, Lenovo first. Key spec from the page, 14-inch screen, pretty compact. Mm -hmm. Now, resolution. There's a slight um, discrepancy in the sources here. The quick summary says 1920 by 1080, you know, full HD. Standard stuff. But the detailed tech specs list the maximum resolution as 2240 by 1400. Oh, okay. That's quite a bit higher than full HD. And wait, that resolution implies 16-point Nuno aspect ratio, right? Not 16.9. Exactly. The sources confirm it's 16-point Nuno, which is nice. Gives you a bit more vertical room, good for documents, coding, that kind of thing. Yeah, less scrolling. What about the screen surface? described as glossy in the material we've got. So potentially reflective, depending on your lighting. Got it. Now, connectivity. The sources, especially user reviews and tech details, seem pretty clear here. Yeah, very clear. And maybe a deciding factor for some. Mm -hmm. It has no HDMI port, no VGA either, though that's less surprising these days. So it's purely USB-C. Purely USB-C. Two ports, one on each side, which is handy for cable routing. Yeah. And they do support pass-through charging. Ah, okay. So single cable for display and power back to the laptop potentially potentially yes if your laptop supports display port over USB-C and power delivery users seem to like that simplicity based on the feedback okay here's a big feature mentioned in the sources for the lenovo the touchscreen right this is a major differentiator it's a touchscreen monitor and the user feedback we saw was really positive someone called the touch input Excellent. Excellent. Okay. And there was that interesting bit about using two touch screens. Yes. That reviewer was surprised that Windows apparently let them use both their laptop's touch screen and this monitor's touch screen simultaneously. That's well, that's pretty neat. Definitely not something you see every day. How about the stand? Portable monitor stands can be hit or miss. This one seems to be a hit, according to the users. It's a built-in stand, not one of those foldable cover things. It has a really wide tilt range, like 5 degrees all the way to 90 degrees flat. Wow, okay. And users explicitly said they found it much better, much more stable than those magnetic folding cases. That makes sense. Can it do portrait mode? It can, yes. The sources mentioned portrait orientation is possible. But one user did flag that it can feel a bit wobbly if you're actively using the touchscreen in that vertical setup. Hmm. Okay, something to bear in mind for Portrait Touch users. Now, portability, obviously key. 14-inch size sounds easy to pack. Users did say it was easy to travel with, yeah. Made their bag only very slightly thicker and very slightly heavier, according to one review. Okay, that sounds promisingly light. But the weight spec and the sources, wasn't there some confusion? There really was. The technical details list 4.18 pounds. Whoa, over 4 pounds. That's not light for a portable monitor. Right, and the comparison table backs that up, listing 1.9 kilograms, which are the same. Mm. But that same table lists other similar-looking Lenovo models, maybe older ones like the M14 or M14T at like 0.88 pounds or around 1.5 pounds. Big difference. Huge difference. So which is it? Well, the user saying it felt only very slightly heavier, really clashes with that four pound figure. Mm. It suggests either the spec is wrong for this Gen 2 model or it somehow feels much lighter when packed. Based only on the sources, the weight is definitely ambiguous from the specs, but the user experience points towards it being quite manageable. Okay, a bit of a mystery there in the source data. How did users rate it overall? Sentiment was extremely positive, actually. A perfect 5.0 out of five stars. Wow. But, and this is a big but, it's based on a tiny number of reviews in the source only four ratings. So great feedback, but small sample size. People said it performs better than expected, called it extremely useful. The touch and stand got praise too. And pricing. Did the sources give a clear price for the specific M14T Gen 2? Unfortunately, no. The source pages we looked at showed prices for maybe older or alternative Lenovo models, but not clearly for this one. So its current price is kind of uncertain based on this material. Okay, so Lenovo M14T Gen 2, 14 inch, 16.1, now or higher res screen, excellent touch, simple USB-C, good stand, but maybe a bit wobbly in portrait, confusing weight spec, uncertain price. 
Got it. Let's switch gears to the ViewSonic VX16 V5 4K. Right, the ViewSonic. Oh. Different approach here based on the sources. It's bigger, 15.6 inches. And the headline feature is definitely the resolution. 4K UHD. That's 38 already by 2160 pixels. 4K on a 15.6 inch screen. That must be incredibly sharp, like razor sharp text. Absolutely. Great for high detail work, photos, videos. The aspect ratio is the standard 16.9 widescreen. What about the screen surface here? Glossy or matte? Another slight conflict in the source is similar to the Lenovo's resolution. The main about this item says glossy, but a user review specifically for the 4K LED version states it has a matte screen. Ah, and this is the 4K LED IPS model, right? It is. So the user feedback suggesting it's matte is probably the accurate one for this specific unit. Matte's generally better for reducing glare. Yeah, definitely preferable for varied lighting. IPS tech too, so good colors and viewing angles should be expected. How's the connectivity compared to the Lenovo? More versatile. It also has two USB-C ports, and the sources mentioned they handle two-way power up to 60W, so pass through charging again. But crucially, it also has a mini HDMI port. Okay, mini HDMI, that opens it up to more devices. Anything else? Yep, a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack too. So you can plug in headphones or external speakers directly. So more options than the Lenovo's USB-C only setup. Any downsides noted in the sources? There was some user feedback, specifically about Mac connectivity. A few users found it could be a bit finicky to reconnect after the Mac wakes from sleep, sometimes needing an unplugger plug. Hmm, okay. A potential annoyance for Mac users, maybe. But they said it worked well once connected and also fine with docks. So maybe just a direct connection quirk for some. What about other features? Speakers. It has Google speakers, unlike the Lenovo, based on the sources. Butte. Don't get too excited. User feedback consistently called the sound quality poor, or tenny. Tinny speakers. Check. Better than nothing, maybe? Any other goodies? It does have eye care tech, flicker-free, and a blue light filter. Nice for reducing eye strain if you're staring at it for hours. Always appreciate that. Yeah. And the stand, similar to the Lenovo's. Also built in, yes. Users seem to really like the kickstand, especially in landscape mode. Called it fantastic, solid feeling, and endlessly adjustable. It does portrait mode, too. But like the Lenovo, users found it less stable vertically tending to lean back a bit more than desired. Interesting parallel there on the portrait stability. One unique thing the sources highlight for the ViewSonic is its ability to power other devices. If the monitor itself is plugged into power via USB-C, it can apparently send power out to a connected phone or even a Nintendo Switch. Oh, really? The Switch? Yeah. A user specifically confirmed it connects directly to the Switch with just USB-C for power and video. No dock needed. That's a pretty big deal for portable gaming. Definitely a cool bonus feature based on that feedback. How's the portability feel on this one? It's a bit bigger. It is bigger at 15.6 inches, but the weight seems much clearer and lower than the Lenovo's confusing spec. The source is consistently listed at 1.7 pounds across different sections. 1.7 pounds, that's really light for a 15.6 inch 4K monitor. Exactly, and users back this up strongly. Described as super lightweight, very portable, easy to slip into a bag, no weight confusion here, according to the sources. Good. And the overall user sentiment? Pretty positive, too. A 4.4 4 out of 5 stars rating. And this is based on a much larger sample size, the 178 ratings in the source. So more data points there. What did people praise most? Overwhelmingly, the display quality. That 4K resolution got terms like outstanding, sharp image, perfect text. Color accuracy also got high marks, mentioned 100% DCI-P3 coverage. Great for photo video editing, according to users. Brightness was good, too and portability, plus that versatile USB-C power feature. Sounds like the screen is the star. Any recurring complaints? Build quality got mixed reviews in the sources. Some said top quality, others reported issues. So maybe some no. inconsistency there. And then the Mac connectivity thing we mentioned, and yeah, those poor speakers came up a lot. Okay. And the price for the ViewSonic, was that clear in the sources? Very clear. $459.99 for a new one, and there was a used option listed around $348. Right, so around $460 new. Comparing that to the prices we did see for the other Lenovo models in that source, the ViewSonic seems positioned as the more expensive option here, based purely on the info provided. Seems that way, yes. So, if we synthesize all this from the sources, mm. what's the takeaway? Well, they really seem aimed at slightly different needs, don't they? The ViewSonic is all about that gorgeous high-res 4K screen on a slightly larger 15.6-inch display. Plus, it offers more connection flexibility with mini HDMI. 
great for visuals, media, maybe creative work, and its portability seems reliably lightweight based on the sources. Totally agree. It leans into visual fidelity and connection options. The Lenovo, meanwhile, it's a bit smaller at 14 inches. Resolution is still good, 2240 by 1400, but not 4K, different aspect ratio, 16.20. Huh. But its killer app, based on the sources, is that touchscreen. Right. The excellent touch input, that potential dual touchscreen scenario. Mm -hmm. That's its unique selling point. Connectivity is simpler, maybe cleaner if USB-C is all you need. Portability seems good based on user feel, even if the spec sheet is confusing. Both have decent built-in stands, better than case stands, though maybe a bit shaky in portrait. ViewSonic adds a tripod mount. Speakers, though bad, eye care. Lenovo's main extra is just touch. And ViewSonic has that switch compatibility and device charging feature noted by users. And the price is known for ViewSonic, higher, around $460 new, unknown for this specific Lenovo based on these sources. It really paints a picture of choosing between top-tier visuals and connectivity versus interactive touch input within that portable form factor. Precisely. Different priorities cater for. So here's something to chew on, based only on what we've pulled from these product pages and reviews. If you were choosing, would that stunning 4K resolution and the extra ports on the ViewSonic justify its clearer, likely higher price, and maybe dealing with those reported max sleep weight quirks? Or does the Lenovo's unique touchscreen functionality, the 16.10 aspect ratio, and the simple USB-C setup appeal more to how you work or play, even with the question marks around its exact weight from the specs and its current price based on these sources? A classic trade-off scenario presented by the source material. To find the latest prices and deals, be sure to check out the links in the description below. And hey, if this deep dive helps you make sense of these options based on the sources, do subscribe to the channel. We do more of these, breaking down the tech info you send our way. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive.